Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing to you the first wave of DLC for Fire Emblem Engage. Keep in mind that the way the DLC is structured is that you have to purchase the expansion pass from the eShop. It is not possible to buy the DLC waves individually like you could the individual fighters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This first wave of DLC contains some additional stat boosting items, some additional clothes at the bouquet, and two new emblem rings. Now, as far as the new stat boosting items and bouquet, when you visit the bouquet for the first time in Chapter 6, for me, that's when you receive them, and I believe it's Chapter 5, when you first visit the Somnial, that you receive the stat boosting items. Now, as far as the rings, you get both of those in Chapter 6. This was incredibly frustrating for me to figure out, as when I first booted up the game, all of the online guides and walkthroughs all said it was Chapter 5, and I was like, why is nothing happening? So that's my first gripe right out of the way, is it seems so arbitrary when the rewards decide to come. Like, why is it that you have to wait for the stat boosting items? Why is it after chapter 6? Nothing in the story would suggest that you have to get to that point. Regardless, when you go to the Somnial, after you beat chapter 6, then you will receive this very brief notification at the top of the screen that says something has happened on Lookout Ridge. So when you go to Lookout Ridge and you move forward, it'll trigger a cutscene where you will automatically get the Emblem of Rivals, which contains the three house leaders from Fire Emblem Three Houses, Edelgard, Dimitri, and Claude. Initially, the dialogue between them is really interesting as all of the original voice actors returned, and the concept is that they will be working together, which is definitely not something that Three Houses does very much if you don't get the Cindered Shadows DLC. And so you can equip this one ring to give all three characters to a single unit. And this ring is not affected by certain events in the story, so you can still equip it even when there are certain conditions that may make it harder for other emblem rings. Now as far as how you unlock Tiki, that's also after chapter 6. A part of the map will expand so that you encounter a loading screen and you go to a whole new section of the map called the Divine Paralogues. Now I presume that this is where the later DLC packs will pick up because there are several locations that say this content is unavailable and there's a bunch of question marks and it doesn't give any indication as to when. So I'm guessing because it has its own special spot that it's basically saying a to be continued type of vibe. So you go to the paralogue that's actually open and then Tiki from Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon will appear and she will ask you to complete a trial in order to get her, so you're not just handed the ring like you are the house leaders. And so you'll have to face an all new level that deals with ice physics and some dragons that if they hit you with their ice breath, they will cause your unit to not be able to move for the next turn. You will also have to step on certain switches on the map to open the doors before you can face Tiki. And once you win the battle, then you unlock Tiki as yet another emblem ring. And just like with the emblem of rivals, Tiki's ring is not affected by the story. So what do these rings actually do? They honestly are quite the game changers, especially because Fire Emblem Engage is a pretty hard game, even when you're playing on the easiest difficulty. So with the Emblem of Rivals, that's the House Leader's Ring, the game will randomly select which House Leader is going to be the emblem that floats beside you. And depending on which emblem is out, that can affect the gambit that you're able to perform even when you're not syncing with those emblems. So for example, when Dimitri is out, you can do a shield gambit, which increases your defense. A poison gambit when Claude is out, where after you attack, it creates a cloud of poison that, well, poisons, 
all of the enemies nearby, and the Flame Gambit for Edelgard, which causes the immediate radius of spaces to be on fire. Of course, I found that this one is pretty hit or miss, because while it essentially does the same thing as the Poison Gambit ring, it also burns your main character, so be careful about that. Now, as far as weapons go, you unlock the three heroes relics that the house leaders use in their respective games. You've got Fail Not, which is a really powerful bow, while the downside being that it can't attack up close. Then there's Amir, which is Edelgard's axe, and this axe requires the enemies to attack first because it's ridiculously powerful, but it has the properties of a smash weapon. And finally, Eridbar, which is Dimitri's Lance, which doesn't seem to have any apparent weaknesses or downsides from what I can see besides if it's attacked by an axe because of the weapon triangle and breaking system. In addition to that, as if you didn't think that was enough, once you actually engage with the emblem ring, then your character takes on the Garigmach Monastery uniform, and after victories will sometimes do the sayings and quips that the characters use in Three Houses battles, such as, that's the golden deer for you, which is what Claude will say when he wins a battle in Three Houses. Now, you can choose between combat arts and simply using the house weapons. When you use combat arts, there are three possibilities depending on where you are in proximity to the enemy. Keep in mind that each art, when you use it, requires you to attack the enemy with the corresponding hero's relic. So when you use Claude's ability, it causes the enemy to not attack you after the next phase if it's still alive. This seemed to be hit or miss for me, as sometimes I would use it against bosses and they still attacked me the next turn anyway, so I think it's meant to be used against regular enemies. Dimitri's ability lets you attack again after you've already attacked, so it's essentially like when a person dances next to you, except now you get to do it yourself, to attack an enemy once and then attack them again, which is really useful against bosses. And then, finally, Edelgard's ability lets you double the weapon's might in an attack. I never used that, because I found that my character was powerful enough as it was. And then finally, once per summon, of the three house leaders, you can do an attack known as Houses Unite, where all three heroes relics barrage the enemy and nearly always are finisher attacks, which again is really useful against bosses and really saved my hide on several of the tougher battles. I recommend giving this emblem ring to your main character, especially if you use all of the stat boosting items to buff up your character even more, as this essentially makes Ali Air borderline unstoppable. It doesn't make Ali Air perfect by any means, but it definitely can really turn the tides of battle. Now as far as Tiki's ring, hers radically transforms whatever character you are, as once you engage with her, your character takes on a full-on dragon form, which increases the character's stats in addition to letting you use three different draconic weapons. I really only used one of them, which is the Eternal Claw, which essentially lets you attack twice with a very high critical rate. The others are, again, following the properties of Smash weapons, not to be confused with Super Smash Brothers weapons, where the enemies attack first, and I didn't find them particularly useful because I gave this to Anna, who was by far the most powerful unit in my army, except for Alier, and again, she was practically unstoppable in dragon form, except for when units use chain attacks against her. I think that you should give your Tiki ring to whatever unit is already so powerful and you want her to wreak havoc. The only downside to equipping Tiki's ring 
is that when you're in draconic form, you are not able to use any other weapons besides dragon form attack. So for example, I gave it to Anna who could use bows. She was unable to attack long range while in dragon form. And currently there's no way to unengage with an emblem manually. Now Tiki's special skill that every emblem has to have is called Divine Blessing, which is yet another great game changer where once per summon, if Tiki or if the unit carrying Tiki's ring is standing next to another unit, you could give that ally a revival stone. Which if you haven't gotten far enough in the story, at some points of the game, some enemies and bosses will have more than one revival stones, which essentially doubles or triples their health bar after you defeat them once then you'll have to defeat them again because the revival stone, well, revived them. So essentially now you can give that to one of your own units. So for example, if you give it to a unit that has 60 health and then 60 health is depleted, then you'll get 60 health again after you get defeated. So I think that's really cool. And I definitely think that it made the purchase of the expansion pack worth it already. And to think that there's still more waves to come. One thing that I think will be divisive among the, compu the community is that there are online components to engage, such as the Tower of Trials. I didn't personally test them out very much because online things in video games that are optional aren't really my thing. I prefer to play offline. So it's unclear to me if you're able to use these rings in arenas or co-op missions as they do seem very much like game-breaking pay-to-win mechanics. Now in single player obviously there's nothing wrong with gaining a little bit of advantage because you paid money because you wouldn't want to pay for nothing. But I do think that if you're going into a multiplayer match the courteous thing would probably be not to equip them if they are so that players who haven't purchased the expansion pack don't feel left out. So at the current moment, the expansion pack costs $30 for everything. And I definitely think if you're a huge fan of Fire Emblem Three Houses and I guess Shadow Dragon, they do offer some amazing buffs. And it is really nice to get all of the original voice actors back and have some additional dialogue. It doesn't really add any new support conversations apart from when you go into the arena and you upgrade your bonds. You can still talk to the characters in the Somnial, but as with the rest of the characters, they only speak in one sentence. So I think the expansion pack is worth a buy so far, especially if you think the base game is too hard and you want a little bit of an edge. I can see why players might want to wait for something else to happen, but in the meantime, I think it's great. So thank you very much for watching. Again, I'd like to thank my patrons, Matthew Rakowski, Spoon Ghost, and Splat Cat for supporting me financially. Link will be in the description if you would like to join. And until the next time, remember to keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye!